Welcome to yet another episode of Stockbridge Sketchworks. I am your most aromatic host, Peter Stockbridge, and this is episode two of the Back to the Future project. Um, and in this episode, we are dealing with Dr. Emmett Brown, um, his face. Uh, in the previous episode, we dealt with Marty McFly, the bulk of it. Um, as you can see there, um, it's not 100% accurate, um, but I, I, I kind of, I'm, I make a few tweaks off camera, um, I think it's between this episode and episode three, so, um, yeah, uh, it, it's been an interesting journey because of the color palette needed. Uh, to get the, the, the face right. As I mentioned in the previous episode, uh, this, despite their faces having skin color, obviously, um, there's, a, there's a big bright orange light pointing right at them. Um, and we've also got a lovely key light to the back left and then a nice sort of, you know, pinky sort of light to the, to the right. Um, obviously, that's a reaction to this reaction to the fire that's going on in the background. So, yes, working on Dr. Emmett Brown now. Starting off with a orange wash Doc Brown is is he's a little bit harder to do you can see that he you know if you look at his, his sort of basic structure he kind of looks like uh, Tim Curry's it um, <laughs> which is kind of hilarious but yeah um, It's quite tricky to get the the tones right in this one, um, which is you know it's kind of why I just I decided to do it really. Uh, my f uh, my friend Alan, his friend who um, made the request. I always um, I always take on these challenges because I I see life as a kind of uh, a series of opportunities and. In, if you don't sort of grasp those opportunities, it's, it's, you know, it's not the end of the world, but, you know, you have to grasp some of them, you know. And I, I take things on a sort of a very natural, organic basis, and um, I felt like it was the right time to, to tackle something a bit more... complex. I always like to push myself and I'll always say to people that if you're going to try and learn something it, it, it's usually better and I've, I've always found it in my experience to be a lot better if uh, you jump in at the deep end um, because you, you find that you know I mean if you're a competent person and you know you're very logical and you're you know you have some kind of experience then you you know give it a go i mean like even if you don't it's like if there's no real danger involved and with art obviously there's none you know unless you're making a sculpture and, and the sculpture is likely to you know collapse on you or something i don't know but whatever it is um it's always worth you know giving it a go um and also sort of maybe biting off a bit more than you can chew sometimes like you know you're picking a, a source picture that you, oh, I'd love to do this, you know, and, and just be like, oh, wow, I, I would love to just sketch this. Well, give it a go. 
because you never know, you might surprise yourself. And I've learned that with um, with the previous sketch with Kylo Ren. Uh, when my friend Alan asked me to sketch him for me, I was kind of like, oh my fucking God, at first. I was like, how the fuck? Like, really? He wants me to do this? <laughs> but, you know, the more I looked at it, the more I kind of felt, well, you know what? I think it's worth giving it a crack and I I bought some massive A2 paper off of um, I think it was cassart.co.uk and I didn't expect to get three pads but I got three pads through I thought oh great you know they're sitting on my desk at the moment because there's, there's it's just too big I can't, I can't put them anywhere without risk of bending the paper so they are just sat rather boldly on my desk at the moment but anyway yes I bought a set of A2 paper um, really nice thick you know 220 GSM paper and uh, yeah just tore a, tore a sheet off and I, I cut it um, in half and ended up with a 60 centimeters by 25 centimeters sketch color pencil sketch of Kylo Ren it's a still from one of the movies this episode 7, 8 and 9 I'm not sure which one I haven't watched any of them not really my cup of tea but as a as a as a shot uh, on its own, and it, it it's quite a it's quite a nice one, you know. It's very sort of dynamic. There's a lot going on, but then you know, there's not much detail involved, and it I, I don't know. It's just I just kind of I felt very much um, attracted to it in a sort of indirect sort of way. I don't know if that makes any sense, but uh, and then one night I just I just did it seven seven and a half hour you know odd hours later I I I had done you know more than half I think I was like seventy percent through and I couldn't believe it you know I just I couldn't believe it it was like five o'clock in the morning and there's a video about it. By the time this episode is released, it will be out, so um, that kind of explains it in more detail. So give that a watch if you haven't seen it already. Yep, okay, so Doc Brown is coming along nice now. We're working in some of the red. I, in the past, would put up the source picture that I, that I printed out and worked from, but... I've since decided not to include that in the videos anymore because um, it, it does kind of take up a lot of room and I know there's not much going on on the right hand side of the screen that's because when I come to do the speed edit I like to keep a bit of blank area to include any graphics and it's really down to how I feel at the time if I'm really proud of a piece or if I have the the extra effort to put in some fancy graphics and you know animate it all, then I'll you know I will do it. But I, you know I won't do it all the time. Is what I'm saying. But I I always sort of film my stuff in a way that gives me the opportunity to do so. Should I desire it. So looking at how far I've gone with uh, Doc Brown right now. It's like it just doesn't look right. <laughs> looks, he looks really weird. But um, it's only because I haven't put in the the, the the proper shadows. I'm getting there. Um, and he, he, he does look like he's been hit by the tango man. He's definitely been tangoed. So when studying this image, um, image before I started, that's something I always do. I always sit down with the source photo and I just just study it. Look at all the um, 
minor details here and there and um, I look at how I'm going to approach it from what point um, I'm left-handed you see so I'll, it's really a good idea for me to start from the right hand side and, and go left to avoid any smudging so I, I look at the source photo and I decide how I'm going to draw across um, in this situation I'm quite nervous about the faces I want to get the faces right because there's obviously not much point in doing anything else if the faces aren't right so I am just making sure that is okay and then I'm going to con carry on uh, starting with the bottom right hand corner and I'm going to start putting in some flames I think that's I, I, I start doing that off camera as I recall and then I pick it up for the next episode yeah that's right I, I do do a, a fair bit between these episodes episodes 2 and 3 um, but I will get to uh, that at the time I will explain Yeah, so the reason why I'm sketching in this sort of pinky bit to the sort of perimeter areas of uh, Doc Martin's hair is because the the subsurface colouring for his hair is uh, it is very pinky. Um, and having studied the photo, because I, I do need to sort of analyse what colours I'm going to need and whether I'm going to need to blend any coming to this decision of uh, Doc Martin's hair being a subtle pink at the on the subsurface level was kind of very immediately apparent so I am just I did just go through and, and capture all the areas just did a, a basic shade in the areas where I know it's going to be and you know you'll see that effect um, at the start of the next episode because uh, as I said I, I think I do that off camera I do try to capture everything on camera sometimes it's not really possible the way I've got my setup right now some of the cables reaching to the camera um, to my mobile phone camera Uh, I might have to use that if my battery is low um, and if I do do that um, I'm, I'm fairly restricted in how I can film there's a whole sort of technical list of issues that, I've, that I'm trying to work through right now in, in getting it streamlined um, and efficient I, you know, it's difficult for me to sort of um, work out what the best way to to do everything, and it's you know it's a learning curve. I've been at it for you know over a year now. With with regards to YouTube, I mean, um, giving it a good go with my channel, and uh, I've been you know working on Instagram on the side. I mean, you know, I've not focused on Instagram as much as uh, as I I do on Facebook, but. Um, a footnote really here is the camera. I'm really sorry if the camera's wobbling every now and then because, it, it, again, it's the setup. I've got a really frim, flimsy tripod uh, with a, a phone holder arm type thing clamped onto the top of it. And, it, yeah, it's all a bit flimsy and I have to counterweight the fucker to uh, keep it steady. It's just the angles that I'm doing everything right now, and um, I am working on it. I have the light pretty much how I want it. It's quite tricky because some of the time I have to kind of retweak the actual film camera uh, coloring and you know the, the gamma and all that shizzle. 
I didn't do it for this. Oh, no, no, I did do it for this. I didn't do it for the um, previous episode. That's right. Because I noticed it looked a bit weird in, in uh, the first recording. My head keeps hitting the camera. Fuck. I am kind of wondering how everyone else is doing it. I really would like a uh, a, um, a, bit of, a bit of advice, to be honest. I will have to sort of ask around, uh, see what I can find, because I can't really sort of um, find a solution yet, anyway. So, working on his face, I'm trying to capture his expression. I'm just really concerned that it's it's not, you know, it's not accurate, and I really want it to be. It, it's like I'm I'm so desperate for it to be perfect. Um, I feel like I'm at a point with Marty McFly where I can just do a little bit of tweaking and it'll be absolutely fine. Doc Brown, though, I think at the time I was starting to panic here. I was like, oh, God, it's not, you know. I'm, I'm you, know, what are, you know, am I missing something? And, and But I just carried on with the that mental process in my head where it's like, right, okay, so now I need to put red here. I need to put yellow here. I need to put orange there. I need to put, you know, dark brown there. And, and so I'm just taking it in my stride looking at every square inch of the source photo and making sure it's, it's uh, replicated accurately. I've noticed that, um, and I have touched upon this in the previous episode, but I've noticed that um, you have to be really sort of delicate with um, these pencils sometimes because you need to get that gradient perfect. There can be no sort of lines and you know that's what I'm striving for an inter interesting fact about the Back to the Future trilogy I'm not sure how common uh, the knowledge is for this one. It's probably actually quite common, but uh, the chap who played Marty's father wasn't in the second or third one. He, um, I don't think he got fired or anything, but I just he, he just left the he left the production because um, there was some issue over finance. And uh, so the the creators had to come up with a uh, you know an alternate alternative story, um, which is why you see his father in the second one, but he's upside down. <laughs> like a stroke of genius, absolute stroke of genius. I don't know what to feel about all of that, just because um, I don't have all the facts. You know what I mean, but. It's a shame that, you know, he didn't return for the second and third one, really. But there we are. That is history for you. This represents a, a time for movies that, you know, has long gone. You know, we're not really going to get this type of movie again um, unless we kind of regress into that kind of 80s attitude which is kind of doubtful because um, society has moved on since then and uh, you know who's going to give up a smartphone you know what I mean I spent some time a few years back with nothing 
I was really down in the dumps. This is when I found um, my love for art again. It had been some time. Um, obviously, you know, the last time I sketched was a teenager, and I just completely ignored the fact that everyone said, "Oh, I should go on and do some, you know, do art as a course, and you know, at college and stuff." Just completely ignored them because I wanted to do acting, and, and then I got interested in film directing, all this kind of shit. But then I kind of rediscovered really art in 2014, and uh, um, so you know, I was down in the dumps then, and I had nothing. And so I went to work at my father's calf, uh, which he had at the time, and uh, uh, it was then that I just, you know, discovered my art again, and I'm here now, you know, practically seven years later, doing colour pencil work. You'll see that cable that I'm every time I, I, I pull my hand out and to grab another colour, um, I have to go underneath the wires which which rocks the camera. And I'm trying to be quick about it because, you know, I, d I don't want to bore you lot. I mean, if you're still watching at this point, wow, thank you. <laughs> uh, but I mean, you know, it's, it's, an, in, it's an interesting process, this task, because it involves a lot of pre-thought and um, I'm not looking forward to uh, the doc's white overcoat basically his his uh, lab coat because um, it's all shades of white you know yellowy white pinky white dark white all this kind of shadows and it's a complete nightmare But I will be going across from the fire in the background to, to be doing Marty McFly's um, Life Preserver and the rest of the rest of him, and then I'll be doing the dark. And in between, I'll just be filling in the blacks of the the background off camera, so I don't have to, you know, bother you with it. So it's coming along, um, sh slowly but surely. And with this dark brown that I'm working in now, you can start to see the effect that I'm going for. It's going to require a few more passes, some subtle tweaks and, and whatnot, but uh, I think it's getting to a point where I am happy with it now. Just blocking in some of the, the, the wrinkle lines there and now blocking out the rest of his uh, forward cranium. Trusting myself quite a lot here, I, I, I don't mind admitting here. I'm looking back at it right now and I'm thinking, Jesus Christ, because I know where I am at the moment and it's working out just absolutely brilliantly. But I'm, I'm looking at this, where I was, <laughs> and it's like, Jesus Christ. I can't see it. I can't see it yet. But it does all come together, and this is it's half of why I love art so much, because you watch other people doing this sort of thing, and you uh, you just, you just, you're like, wow, I can't, I can't describe how good this is, you know. I mean, you know, I'm not trying to blow my own trumpet, I'm talking about other people's work, not my own. So, um, I aspire to be like, there's an artist on uh, Instagram 
called uh, Thierry Duval. He's just absolutely fantastic. He does uh, city paintings, you know, buildings and stuff. And the level of detail that he puts into his work is absolutely astonishing. If you are into all that kind of thing and you want some really, really beautiful artwork in your home, please do go check him out. He's got a brilliant website. I don't know what it's called. I've forgotten. But do head to uh, Instagram. Just type in uh, Thierry Duval. He's a French bloke. Um, and he's really, really nice and friendly. And he'll always be um, happy to engage in a conversation with you. Help you out if you've got any... Uh, problems with um, ordering any of his work. I've given him a plug just because he is a genuinely nice bloke, so, um, and his work will just amaze you. So his, you know, he's very inspiring to me, people like him and uh, there's other artists like um, Sid Mead, Bob Ross, you've got Alex Ross, they're just absolutely um, just incredible in their field. Not to mention, of course, Alan Lee and um, the other chap. I, oh, I've forgotten his name now. So, yeah, you can see it now. Is that a satisfactory point? Um, we are going to be wrapping up this episode and I will endeavour to keep the camera steady because it is annoying me. I don't know about you. Yes, we are coming up to the end of the episode and I will be back for the third part where, we'll, we're, <laughs> where <laughs> I will be discussing the next stage which is the fire and... Um, Marty's clothes and obviously um, I'll be going through what I did in between episodes so I'm not a YouTube partner um, I would love to be a YouTube partner, um, not for the financial gain, but just because I want to be able to control the ads that you guys see on my channel. To be quite honest, I don't really want any ads, but I may not have a choice in the future. This is, you know, a not-for-profit channel. I'm not a charity or anything, but I, I'm not here to be making money, is what I'm saying, so... If you want me to do something for you, all you have to do is subscribe and get in contact with me, whether it's through my Instagram or my email or commenting on one of my videos or, you know, on the community tab of my channel. I will always respond uh, within a day. And at this point in time with my viewership, um, my subscriber, subscriber level being as it is, um, I am, I will most likely just do what you ask, to be quite honest with you. Or if, it, you know, if it's a, if you have a specific photo, I mean, as long as it's not nude, nudity or anything. Um, and I mean, it could be any, of, it, of anything really, a family member, a pet, or a celebrity, or, you know, a still from a film even. Um, keep it to one subject, I, I will be, it'll be unlikely that I choose something that has multiple subjects. I mean, two is kind of okay. But yeah, I will be sort of, at this point anyway, I'm, I'm sort of gravitating towards you know, two subjects at the most. So.
So until the next episode, I will love you and leave you. And um, stay safe, stay well. I'll speak to you soon.